right, I'm going to show you the things about Blender that we haven't exactly talked about, but I'm expecting you to be able to do to finish this STL file. So um, let me go through those. What we're going to do is we're going to download a file from Thingiverse, import it into Blender, make a modification of the file in Blender, and then export it back as an STL. I'm in there, I'm gonna save it as a blend file as well. And just to show you um, what I have to do for all of your files to print it, I'm gonna go ahead and import it into make a print software so you can see that as well. So let's get started. First, what I'm gonna share with you is um, Thingiverse, where I found this SD card holder that I want you to um, have. So the, when you're looking at these files, one thing that you want to look at right here is um, some of the details here. On this one, it's about what I want, um, but I also note the size, 80 by 80 by 80 millimeters when it comes in. 80 millimeters is also 8 centimeters, um, so if you get out your ruler, that's actually my be, well, that'll be probably about the right size. Um, another tab right here is the Thing Files uh, tab. If you'll notice, this is a holder.stl. I'm going to go ahead and click that, and you'll notice it downloaded the file. If I click this download all files or this download all files, I can do either one. This one comes in a zip, and you get another window here. And let me just show you the two differences between those real quick. So I'm going to go to my Finder folder, into my Downloads folder. So here's the plain holder STL. If I downloaded that zip file, if I double click on it, it actually extracts the zip file. And then here's all of the files. It gives me some attribution information, the licenses, a readme, and the file itself. This file, note, it's the same size as the Thing Files tab file. Um, it also includes the images um, that are shared on the web page. So both of those. Um, I like less clicks. I'm just going to use the holder.stl. So let's go ahead and switch over to Blender. I know this is fast. Good thing you can pause it, huh? Here's Blender. I'm going to start out by deleting all of the extra stuff. Um, I select X on my keyboard and select Delete. Uh, to select the item, right, I do a right click or a two finger click on our max, delete, and I'm gonna delete my lamp as well because I don't need that for my 3D printing because I am going to um, not render it. Let's go ahead and import our file. We go over to File, down to Import. I'm gonna select STL. I save that in my Downloads folder, so let me open that up. Select my holder.stl and import STL. Ah, where is it? I don't see it. Let me zoom in all the way. No file. What's my problem? I know what the problem is, but I'm trying to, to uh, freak you out. You know what? Let me move this guy uh, over here. Sorry about my window there. Uh, we click on the scene tab. Because I can't see it, it's because it's in this weird unit presets. This is the default blender units, um, which means nothing to us in the real world. Uh, I say that, but I'm, I'm incorrect. So I'm gonna change this to millimeters. This 0 0.001, it's 1,000th one of a meter. So 1,000th of a meter is indeed a millimeter. Let me, still 8.9. Let me see if I can zoom out some. Ah, there we go. I knew it was there. I'm so glad it was there. <laughs> so, Let's take a look at this little um, design. Let me pan around here. So you can see it has five little, uh, those are pentagon indented shapes there, one on each side. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove one just to show you how, um, how this editing of an STL works. So uh, I'm gonna change it to edit mode. I'm going to make sure right here that I'm selecting the vertex because that's what I'm going to modify. If I wanted to get rid of an edge or a face, I would do that instead. So the edge is just an edge of the file and a face is the brand. In fact, looking at this design, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this diagonal as well as, um, as the input here. 
So, or the indentation as well. So how do we do that? I went to edit mode. I'm actually gonna go to wireframe as well so that I can see all of those indentions. Wow, that is hard to see. Let me see if I can move it around a little bit. Okay, right um, my vertex of the indentation. So I can select that with the right click, which is the equivalent of the two finger click. See how it changed that? And I'm gonna essentially delete it. But when I delete, instead of deleting it, if I delete it, it's gonna leave a big hole in my model. Instead, I actually just want to dissolve the vertice. And it actually turned this into a plane. In fact, you know what, let me, um, let's go back to object mode um, and back to solid view. Um, oops, I didn't delete the one that I had expected. So let's go see which one I deleted. There it is, yep. I deleted the back side um, indentation, not the front side. Let's zoom into that um, just to take a closer look. Let's see if we can do the, um, uh, the diagonal, the little diagonal line right there. Um, so I'm in edit mode. I can stay in this solid view. And this time I wanna select the edge. Uh, right click again. There we go. That edge doesn't do anything for my design, so I'm gonna delete it. Um, X and dissolve my H. There we go. Now let's dissolve the face just so that you can see what it does. So I'm gonna delete this face right here. So let me do that. I'm select the face with the right click and I'm just gonna press uh, delete with the X, right? This time I'm actually gonna delete it versus dissolve it so that you can see the difference. I'm gonna delete that face and you can see that I, can, I now have a hole right through my model. Okay, now let's scale it. I'm gonna go back to object mode and I'm gonna go back to solid view, which is at. But let's say I wanna make this actually around five centimeters, 50 centimeters instead of 80. That's gonna mess up the holes and nothing's gonna work on this anyways, but just for, for us. For sakes. So I'm going to scale it, S, which means I'm going to make it bigger or smaller, right? Um, I'm making it smaller. You're seeing my numbers change over on the uh, right side of the screen. And I'm going to take it right down to about five centimeters. Um, I'm going to get at least two of the numbers in the five range. So 5.57 and 5.8 and 4.7. I'm going to select that. Great. Now this scale right here is messed up. These have to read one. So to get them to read one, once I've sized it for correct, I'm gonna go con control A, pardon me, that is a control A. That's the apply, I'm gonna apply the scale. There we go. And see how it changed my scale to one instead of those other crazy numbers. Okay, let's go ahead and save this file before we make a change. I'm just gonna go to save. Up here is where is it gonna save, and here's the name of it. Um, I don't know where users Moggage Harris is. Well, I do, but uh, most people won't, so I'm gonna make sure to save my desktop or in my documents. And let me give it a modified dodec for the file name. I'm gonna save Blender file. Now that saved it as a Blender file on um, my desktop. I'll show you that in just a second. But I also need to export it as an STL. So let's do that, export STL. And I'm gonna save it on my desktop. I have uh, one out there. Nope, we're gonna make it as modified dodec.stl on my desktop. So I will have an STL file and a Blender file on my desktop. You only need to email me the STL. The Blender file is for you to be able to work on your prototype and make modifications as needed. Okay, new finder. So here's uh, my desktop. Um, and you can see we have the modified blend and the dodecahedron blend, uh, or uh, modified S dodec stl. I'm gonna open the, um, the STL file with um, preview. And let me share that with you. There we go. And let's go ahead, so that pans it. Let me see if I can turn it around and you can see some of my modifications there. Let's go ahead and import it into the MakerBot software. Not that you have to do this, that's something I have to do, but I want you to see it so that you get a good idea of what I 
have to go through. Um, so back to MakerBot software, which I had open. Here we go. Here's the MakerBot's print software. So to do this, I have to add your model. Um, it's on my desktop in this case. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. So remember, I changed the size to 50 uh, millimeters. That's around five centimeters. Let's look at the scale in the software. And that is exactly what I scaled it to. So just make sure that scale's right. It makes a step easier for me. Uh, that's all I have to show you tonight. I hope this helps you get your project done for tomorrow. And uh, email me if you have questions. If you can record your screen, that makes it easier for me to see what's going on at least um, here uh, uh, while I'm in training. So good luck.